Hello everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, we're talking about the complex interplay between language and personality. Now, when I tend to talk to people about personality, I tend to tell them to do the personality test in their own native language. And why is this so important? Apart from the fact that you, of course, need to have a good enough grasp of a language to understand what the questions mean. Well, it's important because we might have grown up to have different personalities in different languages. Okay, so this general idea that our personality can change with our language is actually pretty well documented. There are countless studies and qualitative studies where people can report that their personality is different depending on which language. On top of that, when we translate advertisements, we can end up interpreting these images and these actions and these people differently depending on what language that they speak. And so you have to ask yourself, are you really who you are when you're speaking in a different language than the one that you grew up with? Okay, so to test out this general theory about personality and language, I did a big five test and I came out as first the big five equivalent of uh, INFJ when I took it in Swedish. Secondly, when I took it in English, I got the result ENFP. And third, when I did the test in Dutch, I got the result ISTJ. And why were the results so different? Well, first of all, they were not dramatically different. This is very important to say. While the results sound very dramatic, the actual scores and differences between the results were not that significant. But Still, the general pattern was there, and this is also something that has been shown repeatedly on other test takers. When people take a Big Five test in a different language, for example, a Spanish person taking it first in Spanish, and then six months later in English, the result is different. And not just different because it's a different time, but different because it was written in a different language. And how is this possible? Well, first, there is the Whorf hypothesis. The Whorf hypothesis is that language is the operating system of the brain. This is quite a radical theory. It suggests that actually our language is what gives rise to most of our values and our cognition. Without language, we would not understand the concept of beauty or peace. And so language is, according to the Whorf hypothesis, what creates these values and these general ideas. And so perhaps a person that was raised without any language, a person that never learned to speak or read or think in a different language, such a person might never really develop to have a strong personality. Sure, they might have a general sense of temperament, a certain fight or flight response, a certain approach to how they acquire their basic needs, like hunger, food, shelter, and things like that, right? However, they would lack what we today in the Western world or in the world today in general talk about as a refined personality, a personality or a desire for ambition or goals or success or to be a philosopher or writer or a musician. And so we seem to need language to facilitate these processes. However, the Whorf hypothesis is, in my opinion, too radical. I do not believe that it is language that creates cognition. I believe language is a facilitator of cognition, which means that language helps us run our operating system, manage our ROM, manage our processing power, manage our memory and working memory. But I don't believe that language is our memory or our cognition in itself. So. How can you interpret this? Well, first and foremost, your native language is so important to your identity. If you were raised to have a specific native language, suggesting you're not raised in a bilingual home, what's gonna end up happening is that native language is going to be and represent most likely your core personality and how you see yourself. And that doesn't mean that everyone with the same language have the same personality. Rather, it means that you come to interweave the processes that relate to your personality with this language. And so if you are and grow up to be an INFJ, 
you're going to have an INFJ version of English, if we suggest English is your native language. And that means that whenever you speak in another language, you might get a chance to develop other personality traits. For every new language that you learn, you get the chance to develop a new and slightly different variation of yourself. Often, changing your personality is very difficult. It takes long-term consistent effort, and there are many reasons why people struggle to change their personality. First and foremost, your personality is interwoven with your language, meaning to change your personality would also require you to have to change your language. Often, we grow up to have a certain mindset, a certain worldview, a certain set of values, and a certain way of thinking and approaching how we see the world, right? And all of this is interconnected. So we can't just change one part. We have to change out the entire machinery and kind of build a completely new process. This is all about building and creating new pathways in the brain. While your brain is, consists out of millions and millions of neurons, we have networks that facilitate these different processes. And a language can be said to be a network, a set of processes and neurons that work together to do a certain task, and that language might also help you facilitate your dominant personality type. When we look at and study language deeper, we also see that perhaps the key to personal growth and to personal development is to, on top of helping you develop a new skill, put you in a new environment and to put you in a place, a new culture, and to make sure that you learn a new language at the same time. While doing this, you get a more comprehensive look on change in general, and you're able to use this as a chance to develop traits that you were used to struggle with in the past. Now, the general question is, of course, why do you want to? You're probably perfectly fine and valuable and perfect just the way you are, and there's no necessary need for you to change or develop anything. In general, I tend to say that Personal development is a personal choice. It's if you want to, if you feel like you'd benefit from it, if you feel like it would make your life a bit better, there is nothing wrong with developing a new skill or ability. There is nothing wrong with learning to be more outgoing or learning to be more open to experience or learning to be more agreeable. And if you want to learn to be more agreeable, it's not just about learning to say nice things. While that can help, often it's about coming to a new environment, a new set of people you can practice with and perhaps even through learning a new language. Why were my results so drastically different depending on which language that I tested for? Well, why were they so different from everyone else? I think often when we learn a new language, our brain tries to create categories, right? And rather than use the same set of processes, the same personality for multiple languages, your brain might see a use for categorizing and dividing it into different subsets, saying that, hey, perhaps uh, this language could be used for these and these tasks, and that language could be used for that and that task. And so being bilingual might mean that you have the chance to develop and switch between different skills. And so perhaps if you want to be more conscientious, you might benefit from using a Germanic language. Often languages are different in how they are constructed. Some languages are more verbose and require more verbs and longer and longer sentences. Some are very quick and fast-paced. Some put adjective first and some put adjective second, like Spanish. Some languages have multiple adjectives, like Spanish. There's not just beautiful, there's beautifulissimo, and there's beautiful iti, and all of these things kind of just add to the flexibility of language. Language, different language can give us different skills. And perhaps in the future, we'll find ourselves preferring to use Chinese when dealing with certain specific tasks and activities. And perhaps sometimes we'll find that it's easier to just use English. But most of all, this just goes to show how complex identity formation and personality really is. For me, English has taken over as my native language. I use English in 95% of my real life situations. I use English when I think, write, and read. And so English has over time 
gradually become my primary language. It's become a bigger part of my identity and who I am than Swedish. At the same time, whenever I go back to Sweden, I find myself transported back. It's like I regress to a different person than who I am today. In Sweden, I find myself feeling a lot more introverted and I find myself feeling a lot less spontaneous. And there, I feel like I am a different kind of person. And here, a question is, of course, which person is the real me? Well, all of them are me. That's just how it goes. It's silly to try to categorize your identity by your personality type. Why not just categorize your identity by referencing and remembering who you are? At least that's what I think. What do you think? And how have you noticed bilingualism affecting your personality? Are you a monolingual and how do you look at personality? Do you think monolinguals have a more static or a more fixed identity? Or do you feel that bilinguals can risk becoming confused on who they are? And what do you think is the benefit of having multiple personalities compared to just having one set trait or personality that you tend to spend 99% of your time doing?